Welcome to the video lesson on physics motion graphs. The objective of this lesson is to understand the relationships of distance time, velocity time, and acceleration time graphs and to be able to sketch those graphs for almost all the major types of motions that we'll see in this course. Let's start by taking a look at the types of graphs that we can draw and the information that we can get from them. We start with the distance or displacement or position, all the same thing with regards to the graphs. Uh, so distance, displacement, position versus time graphs. The symbol that we'll be using for uh, distance, displacement, position is X and the symbol that we'll use for time. So for us, the distance time graph will be an X versus T graph. What can we get from them? We can, of course, the easiest thing we can get is we can get the distance at any given time uh, just by um, uh, going down to the time axis, going up to the best fit line, and then over to the left, find out how far it's going, how far it's traveled at some given time. We can also get the average velocity from the slope of the straight line. Um, these two keywords go together, average velocity and slope on a distance time graph. And we can also get the instantaneous velocity from the slope of the tangent line to the curve at that point. So if our best fit line is not a straight line and it's a curve instead, we, you can see how we can't get average velocity from that because the velocity is changing but we would be able to use a tangent line and get the instantaneous velocity using the slope of the tangent. And I'll demonstrate that for you later. Our next type of graph is the velocity or speed. And the same symbol we use for that is V versus time graphs, again, T. So a VT graph. And what can we get from those? The easiest, of course, again, velocity time graph is the velocity at any given time. Um, similarly, uh, we get average acceleration from the slope of the straight line. And uh, one thing that is commonly tested is finding the displacement of the object by finding the area between the line and the time axis. Okay, they really like to test that one. Okay. Our last type of graph is the acceleration versus time graph, our symbol for acceleration is A and of course versus T so these would be AT graphs and what can we get from them only the acceleration at any given time they're the most limited um, type of gra motion graph that we can get as far as the information we can attain from them and again I'll demonstrate this for you as we start to do the various graphs for all the types of motion let's move on to that and then let's take a look and what we're going to do for each of these uh, motion scenarios or situations we're going to draw the XT, VT, and AT graph one right under the other um, so that we have a good understanding of the differences between the graphs and what they communicate to us. So we're going to start with an object at rest. We're going to start easy and work our way towards the harder scenarios. So for an object at rest, if an object is just standing there, that means that its position wouldn't be changing and as time goes forward so you could pick any spot and what this of course means is that the distance is not getting bigger or smaller as time progresses okay well if an object is at rest that means its velocity is zero and where the time axis intersects here on the uh, y-axis would be where time, uh, where velocity is zero. So we would have a VT graph that has a horizontal straight line on the time axis. If there's no velocity, there's no acceleration. So it also has a zero AT graph, a horizontal line on the time axis. Okay. We now go to an object moving at constant velocity away. What does that mean? That means the, the uh, 
velocity is constant but the distance is increasing over time so this of course would be uh, a straight line uh, sloped upward and this if you take a look the X numbers are getting bigger while time is moving in a positive direction that's the only direction time can move okay and the fact that the line is straight means that the rate of change of the displacement or distance is staying constant and of course that means constant velocity if that's true then on our VT graph we're going to have some non-zero velocity over that same time interval and it should be obvious to us that that velocity remains constant you notice here that this horizontal line is above the time axis the slope of this line is positive up here on the XT graph so our velocity is positive on our VT graph we still are not accelerating this object is not speeding up or slowing down so its acceleration value is zero so this would be a horizontal line on the time axis moving on to our next scenario object moving at constant velocity toward well constant velocity means our line is going to be straight toward means that our X numbers our distance numbers are going to be decreasing so this would be a um, straight line negatively sloped showing that our X value is decreasing as time is increasing straight line indicating to us that the rate of change of that distance is remaining constant therefore constant velocity well constant velocity again means that we're going to have a horizontal straight line this time though our horizontal straight line is below the time axis the slope of this line is negative indicating negative velocity meaning that it's going toward so the first lesson we pick up here on VT graphs is that when your line is above the time axis for a VT graph that means the object is moving away from the point of origin and when the line is below the VT graph the object is moving toward the point of origin huge point for you to remember there our object is still not accelerating so its a value is zero so again we have a horizontal line on the time axis at which a equals zero okay next we go constant um, object moving at constant acceleration away that means this object is speeding up and if it's moving away from the point of origin that the X numbers the distance numbers are getting larger this will result in a curved line that looks something like that and um, curved upward means that it's getting faster I'll demonstrate for why for you here in a second and uh, a way indicated by the fact that the X numbers are getting bigger as time increases okay now why is this a curved upward line like this and not a curved upward line like I just demonstrated with the pen okay if we take our tangent line which I'm going to grab a tangent line down here and bring it up we start out at the beginning here tangent line being a line that touches the curve only in one spot you can see that at this particular spot the slope of this tangent line would be zero so this object had started from rest however when we go here and we draw our tangent line now we have a positive slope for that tangent line what does that mean positive velocity means the object has gotten faster when we move upwards and higher on the graph what's happening to our tangent line our tangent line slope is getting steeper that means the speed is increasing that means our object is accelerating if we were to do the other line and we'll have that scenario later 
you would see that the slope would be decreasing, showing that the velocity is decreasing. Okay. All right, object moving, constant acceleration away. So that is going to be a straight line on our velocity graph, positively sloped. And that would indicate to us, of course, that the velocity is increasing over at a constant rate, therefore constant acceleration. And as we reviewed earlier, it's above the t-axis, indicating to us that the object is moving away from the point of origin. Now we do have a non-zero a value. And because this, the slope of this line is positive, that would be positive acceleration. So whatever that acceleration would be, would be the y-intercept for this line, okay, and a horizontal line above the t-axis because acceleration is positive. Going to our next scenario, object moving at constant acceleration toward, okay, this of course means that the speed is increasing but we're losing distance getting closer to the point of origin. Okay, so this line would look something like this. Slope downward. Try to draw a better curve than I can with my pen here on the screen. Okay. For the VT graph, sorry about that. For the VT graph, constant acceleration means uh, we're going to have. Um, start from rest and get faster so the V numbers have to be getting bigger but we're moving toward the point of origin so we're below the time axis. So our V number is getting bigger but being below the line means our line is sloped downward like this. Notice that the V number is getting bigger meaning constant acceleration toward below the time axis. Here we have a negatively sloped line of the slope of this is the acceleration, of course. So our acceleration would be a straight horizontal line below the time axis. Okay. Now shifting back to our next scenario, constant deceleration away. This means this object is slowing down, but move the x numbers are getting bigger. This would be a curve that looks something like this. Okay. And you can see if you did slopes of tangents that the tangent line slopes would be decreasing as the x numbers get bigger. Okay. Our velocity time graph is going to be a speed that's decreasing at a constant rate, but we're away, so we're above the time axis. So decreasing at a constant rate above the time axis. Again, this is a negatively sloped line, so we're going to have a horizontal line of constant acceleration below the time axis. You can clearly see why acceleration time graphs are so limiting, because both of these have the same acceleration time graph, but they are completely different motions. Okay, object moving at constant deceleration toward, what would this curve look like? Well, toward means the x numbers are getting less. Slowing down means the slopes of our tangents would be getting less. So this would result in a curve like this. Our velocity graph is going to take the shape of blow, decreasing v numbers, so getting closer to zero. And then that's a positive acceleration because the slope of this line is positive. So we would have a horizontal line showing constant acceleration above the time axis. Okay. All right. Last one. Object thrown straight up, which returns to the thrower. This is going to be a combination of two graphs we've already done. This object increases in distance going away from the ground, but slows down, comes to rest, and then returns to the thrower's hand. Should be a nice hill here showing that it speeds back up but loses x distance. 
the VT.